Hey guys, today I'm going to make a bold prediction and it will have to do with magic cards. Now we all know reserve list alpha beta and that is known so there's no reason for me to say buy them because you should already know that. Arabian Nights, Legends, even the Dark. Here is my bold prediction that Unlimited, yes Unlimited, will rise a ton in price. Unlimited is very special because there's not much of it. There's a lot more revised and we've seen Shivy and Dragon. It's an $8 card now. Lightning Bolt's a $3 card from 50 cents. We are seeing a rise in revised. Part of what's happening right now is there's a lot of money from Bitcoins. Bitcoins, Elysium, all of these currencies, people have made millions of dollars just from sitting at their home and owning this currency, one time being like 10 or $100, now at one time hitting $10,000. At that point, they would buy magic cards. And that's what's happening here is you have a lot of wealthy, new wealthy individuals, and some of them even we're trying to buy seance or we're paying bitcoins for you to burn seances. This actually happened. If you had accepted his offer for bitcoins, you'd be rich right now. There was a guy on MTG Finance Reddit giving bitcoins away at a very good value. This was when bitcoins was $10, $15, $20, very, very cheap. And if you burned enough seances, you would be rich by now. So a lot of people who were invested in crypto and bitcoins and Elysium, they are nerds. And they have nothing to, better to do with their money than to drop it on cards. Now, are they going to drop it on standard? No. Are they going to drop it on modern? No. So that leaves old cards. Unlimited, this is your only opportunity to get unlimited. Point blank, I'm going to say, after this summer's over, you will not be able to get unlimited at the current prices they are at. And that includes great cards like, obviously, Black Lotus and Power 9, all the way to Dual Lands, and all the way down to the commons. And the commons are what's interesting to me because they have the largest potential to spike. Unlimited is... Not exactly like Revised. There's cards like Blaze of Glory. I remember that card. Where cards exclusive to Unlimited will be slightly more expensive. So if you have any inkling, any desire to own these old Magic cards, now is the time to pull the trigger because at the end of the day, there's just too much money flooding in. And that's what I'm seeing. So let me tell you from a store perspective. I sell these um, binders, and these binders originally were for five dollars. Then they went to twenty. Then they went to forty. I'm selling them now for sixty, eighty dollars a binder, and I can't make them fast enough. You know what's in these binders? Reserve list cards, old cards, popper cards. The demand is crazy. It's crazy. I just had um someone come in and I was telling them, oh, you know, my, my goal is to make a hundred of these binders and then we're randomly, this was at the $40 mark. The guy was like, oh, well, you know, I'll look at all four. If I can look at all hundred binders, then I'll just buy them outright. All hundred of them. And he's serious. He's an energy trader. He's good friends with my other friend, Kobe. There's a lot of money right now in this imaginary currency called Bitcoins. Now, Bitcoins is based on blockchain technology, yada, yada, yada. It has gone down from its, 12, I think, 10, 12,000 to about six right now as of this recording of the video. It's at a all-time low for the year. But it doesn't matter. They're, if something goes from $10 or $100 to $10,000 and goes back down to $6,000, you're actually going to that's going to encourage these people to buy more magic cards, not less, because they're like, oh, well, I don't, I want to have it be in something that won't be reprinted. I want to have it to be in the investment. And this is an article. 
And Rudy actually says that people are using it as investment, and I think that it is true. So do as he does, do not do as he says. Because what Rudy's doing is he's selling Patreon's boxes of recent sets. Those boxes have no value long term. They don't. Magic Origins. That was supposedly a good box. It was terrible. Terrible investment. Um, it was supposedly a good box to invest in. No. What he's doing, what everyone in this market is doing, is they are in a frenzy. Now, you might be like, oh, it's going to be a bubble, blah, 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 blah. It's not a bubble. I mean, let me put it this way. You have a very limited, unlimited, the quantity of unlimited cards is known. As older players, as you know, so I, when I started playing Magic, I was four or five. I was in kindergarten. And I remembered looking at Demonic Tutor, being kind of scared of that one. I all, the first pack I had was Dragon Whelp. I love that card. I still love it today. I still collect as many copies as I can of that card. And so for middle elementary school, when I have allowance of like a dollar a week or something ridiculous, I didn't, wasn't able to buy much magic cards. So the amount of value for a Black Lotus at that time was $20. And people were really upset. People were very upset that the Black Lotus Alpha version cost $20. There was a quote in the Inquest magazine about that time, and everyone knows that story. Well, I, I, surprisingly, no one was upset that the Shivering Dragon was $50. No, yeah, eventually it became $50, and people were not upset because they were like, oh, that's Shivering Dragon. That's a dragon. Black Lotus sucks. And it's so odd when you look at what was happening back then in terms of card prices or perceived value. There wasn't really card prices. eBay, Yahoo's version of eBay had just started up. Inquest would come once a month. So if there was like a new deck, you wouldn't see the daily spikes you see today because there was no websites like that and you just had to follow a magazine. And a lot of times when you're younger, you don't have the most up-to-date magazine. So we're all using magazines from a year ago to determine price. That's what what's happening. We're using a magazine someone got from a year ago to trade. Now, did that person get a new magazine? I don't know. But yeah, at the end of the day, you if you don't jump on this right now, you will not be able to buy these cards for the price that you can see them at today. Unlimited is the next one. I have a gut feeling, and my gut feeling tells me that a lot, even more, as long as Bitcoin keeps dropping, more and more money is going to keep flooding into this old into old magic cards. And those people are not in it to sell. So the mentality is they won the lottery. Who cares? I'm going to buy this and just hold it. I recently saw a video on Rudy's channel about like evil investors. And I don't, and then he talks about like, racing Ferraris and stuff. He doesn't look like he owns a Ferrari. Like, I don't know. Like, those are not the people I'm worried about in terms of, like, spiking prices. There's people in the chair, like, I'm not... Yes, they might have really good collections, but they're not millionaires. There are people who made tens to hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto, and they are spiking the market. So I, I go back to the example I have about what actually spikes the market. It's not the people bragging. It's not the people shouting and yelling. It's the people who are silently in the background. Remember the story of Folly, all right? It's my favorite story because that is a card that I picked and was my favorite card. People said it was bad. And people, oh, I knew it was good. No, you didn't know it was good because it was $2 for years, years and years. It was $2. And I kept buying and buying. So if I was a bigger shark, and uh, let's call it a whale, because that's what you call in gotcha games, and I wanted to buy a ton of something, I would not tell anyone I'm buying a ton of that stuff because if I tell someone and they start buying it, I can buy less of it. So if the purpose is to dump, a, let's say, a million dollars into unlimited cards or beta and alpha, I would not tell anyone because as soon as I buy one Black Lotus, the other ones go up in price. 
So I need the market to stabilize so I can continue to buy because I have a lot of money that I need to spend. So the a lot of times people just don't they blame the wrong people. So if you imagine who spikes a price, Star City Games, Channel Fireball, Card Kingdom, each of these people, each of these companies has a million plus dollars they can just spend like that. And this evil MTG Finance dude buying eight copies of a card. I mean, come on now. Like, do you think he has any impact? No matter how loud they shout, no matter how many articles they write, no matter how many paywalls they hide behind, and how many forums and all this crap that they do to get money for themselves, it affects the market zero. The real movers to the market is if this dude in crypto can dump $100 million. I think they are. I think that's what, what's happening because I have benefit from this. So I'm not saying, no, I, I'm not going to say speak ill of them because they continue to do it. And I continue to have these cards that people want. And we're selling them like hotcakes. Like I literally cannot make these uh, reserve list binders fast enough. But then the question is, should I be making them or should no? But like I have to sell. I need cash flow. I really need cash to pay employees. So I got to sell even if I don't want to. And some of these circle of despair, I mean, you've seen these binders. One day it's five bucks. The next day it's someone pay a hundred for it. Uh, Rapid Fire, that card from Legends is apparently worth like 25 bucks itself. And the dude was super happy when he got it. He was like, oh, wow, this is really good. So I am going to make a hundred of them. And I'm probably going to still set it at $40. And then, you know, and I'll show off all hundred on some stream or something. I will stream soon. I was going to stream after I hit 30,000, but that hasn't happened ever. So anyway, bye guys.